four million inhabitants on this island were killed last year in a series of large earthquakes which swept the region. The cause of the floods remains yet undetermined, although it has been rumored that the military is somehow involved. Preceding the fires, a number of litigations against the government had begun, claiming secret experiments, inclu uh, including local residents, involving inoculations of severe and fatal diseases, bizarre birth control measures, and forced sterilizations. This area has for some time been the backbone of the economy, a source for cheap labor, workers being drawn in from all over the world. Up until recently unorganized by racial and language differences, the population has been no threat upon the ruling class. However, it has been hinted that government opposition and awareness of government actions had become a threat to military defense operations involving the safety of, and national security. Off the New Amsterdam archipelagos lies a small island of primitive tribes speaking dialect sects of Esperanto. The island was historically the site of a physical civilization now in ruins. The natives still practice the archaic religion of prophet and worship of a mythical John Doe, hoped for messiah of material riches. And some followers of the mythical Doe consider him a beneficent spirit. Others see him as a god come to earth or as a king of this long defunct land of milk and honey where the streets are paved with gold. All believe Messiah Doe will someday usher in a prosperous, work-free millennium of unlimited capital gain, pigeon Esperanto for Western material goods. Thus, anthropologists call the John Doe movement a capital gain cult, one of the scores that have sprung up across the mid-Atlantic. Stone Age customs ruled the island when the Dutch discovered the island in 1625. Trading ships soon followed with trinkets and tools like mana from heaven. The natives concluded that the gods of industry were powerful magic and adopted Christianity as a route to the stranger's wealth, but the full capital gain failed to arrive. Frustrations grew, blossoming around 1930 into the John Doe cult. Prophets predicted Doe's arrival, and in 1942, World War reached the island shores. GI troops brought food, jobs, arms, prefab houses, toilet paper, toasters, and Buicks. It seemed Doe's millennium was at hand. But with the war's end, capital gain disappeared, and the islanders resumed their vigil. Some returned to mock military drills and Memorial Day parades in hope of luring capital-laden liberty ships back to the island. In 1964, Western forces again appeared on the horizon. The islanders were grateful. Jobs, guns, tourists, and TVs rained down from the liberal gods, soon followed by what seemed to the naive islanders another financial, spiritual drought. Good fortune of the gods receded as fast as it had appeared, leaving a wake of oil slicks, Clorox bottles, cigarette butts, and devalued dollars. Note habitats of these islanders. They are typical constructions made from the natural resources of the island, brownstones and wood. The islanders learned quickly how to build geometric paths and shelters. Younger islanders hang out in western dress, smoking native herbs while waiting for good fortune to return. Some have imaginative body decoration. Yeah, no, it doesn't develop. Like, like, you take my picture right now, it, you couldn't give me the picture, right? No, that's like a... I've been all the time, you know, remember me? Hey, man, what's happening, man? Oh, Come here. man. Hey, they gotta go. They gotta go, right? Yeah. Isn't that beautiful? That's what I was telling you.
Great. It's a cap, right? You, yeah. yeah. And a cap for the the dentist. This is the dentist. It cost 175. Great. Dollars in 1969. Now it might cost a little more. Yeah, you know, they should tear all these down, you know. That's all money that she's standing there, right? All that's money, even the property and land. It'd be nice to build all together and get moved into them. Before, before the blacks and Puerto Ricans get to mention, they're going to be all white in about 10 years. Really? They don't tell things, you know. They don't want to do it now. They say they ain't going to do it. mess it up again. Yeah. It's probably true. No, the reason got trouble that they never, like, like the landlord didn't up. pick it up. Yeah. Because the garbage man only comes down once a day here when the suburbs right. come around twice. Oh, you can see that three times. the difference right. between how clean it is there and it's it's the same right. garbage company. Right. right. Or either private garbage really? company. Doctors, for a time, were imported in an attempt to control the island's lax regard to their own condition by instituting birth control, sterilization, band-aids, and toothpaste. Allergy! Even though the clinics have long been shut down, some of the more destitute natives occasionally return and chant phrases used by American doctors, believing these words endowed with magical powers that may coerce the healing doors to open once again. Medicine is now back in the hands of the taboo man, or shaman, who keeps a private cache of such phrases to heal, or at least placate the community. The natives call their god of good health, AMA. Old newspapers give clues to the beginning of the first outbreaks. Most islanders are unaware that their population was a major source of test subjects for pathology experiments conducted by the army. Frustrated islanders strip and burn their cars as they break down and leave Cadillac carcasses by the wayside. Frustration and poverty, violence is increasingly prevalent among the islanders. Knowledge and use of modern guns has replaced the spear. Even the youngest learn how to shoot. Fights break out in the streets. These two were scuffling over a pack of cigarettes given to one of them by some tourists. Waves of arson sometimes sweep the community in a tribal rage of disgruntled offering to the invisible god Doe. A plea for divine order to return once more. We did hear rumors that international trilateralists were interested in establishing a base on the island and had hired arsonists to burn out the island's no-income housing.
Papa and my big brother and they, and then they was they keep on putting fire in my building and then we don't have we have to look at this to go water building because there was a fire and our truck our fire escape fell down and our truck and the truck got fell down and the building fell down. The building was shaking and then my building was shaking and then everybody had a run out and then there was a big big fire and that was the worst that was that was the worst fire that I've never seen. Somebody's a man stranger did it. I know. <laughs> and then Faggots, they had gasoline, they put it all over the building, they came back down, they lighted it, and went, whoosh, it blew up. So the truck was in front of the building. The fire skates fell on it. So the fireman came. Fire, they used, so you know the water pressures? They, they, this morning, the streets were flooded with water. Then the other day, a truck came to knock that building down, more down, like it is right now truck and plastic frisbee, now treasured relics, bring to mind the island's brief brush with plenty. The community hoards items such as Levi's, dog tags, keys, fatigues, and currency acquired when they worked alongside the Green Beret. Their fondness for America stems not only from its wealth, but also from the wartime presence of black and Puerto Rican servicemen who seemed to possess as much disability payments as did the white soldiers. The, the islanders did incorporate modern gamemanship. Some tribesmen hoping to win back Lady Luck through OTB and Monopoly. Shell games, cards, and dice are popular. Even the children have their versions of win moves. Still, still, the natives have much time on their hands, having gotten used to the concept of watches and time cards when the GIs had supplied them with jobs. The natives have picked up the pastime of gambling and turned it into a social ritual practiced among the men and with any game tourist. You got it, bro. He knows his shit. He knows his shit. You're gonna be losing. You better move on to the next corner. <laughs> the eyes are crooked in the hand. Don't let him... The main highway lies in ruin, empty of traffic. On both sides, military buildings and Navy piers stand empty. Markers on the road have become mystical signs to the islanders, having no knowledge of their original use. Local fishermen stand on broken piers catching their next meal. Believing that their savior lives in the United States, they generally refuse cooperation with borough authorities for fear of compromising their fidelity to Doe. Widespread confidence in Doe's ability to replenish any shortage once moved the natives to convulse the island's economy by slaughtering all their pensions, eating all available food, fuel, hot dogs, and casting hard-earned local currency into a sea of loan sharks who made Big Macs out of native gullibility. Although Doe fails to materialize, his followers remain devout often attributing his absence to their own shortcomings or to governmental entanglement. Administrators who attempt to discourage the cult only reinforce a conviction that distant rulers want to keep the islanders capital poor.
And so cultists cling to dough in hopes of a better life, while Western critics see the movement marching a downhill road to unfulfilled promises and inevitable disappointment. Tribal anger remains at a primitive level against budget cuts and restoration of funds for jobs and services. The islanders of Manhattan continue to believe in the reality of John Doe and Horatio Alger and confuse cooperation with corporation. They're incapable of realizing the sophistication of the modern world and that they have become social guinea pigs for international financiers and trade development.